Let's see, epic space battles, mm-hmm, check. Oh, an expansive universe with unparalleled freedom. Yes, mm-hmm, expansive, unparalleled, mm-hmm, check. And of course, RPG mechanics, complete with factions, character progression, and intricate crafting, uh -huh. Hmm, where have I seen this before? First of all, let's get one thing straight. Bad games are nothing new. In an era where it feels like every other major release is some half-baked, puffed-up debugging simulator, I think it's important to remember that overhyped cash grabs from mainstream developers have been pushed out for decades. And the same goes for Sequel Syndrome. Anyone who thinks the cycle of yearly re-releases is a uniquely modern issue might be surprised to know we were on the seventh Mega Man back in 1993. And yes, I know, it's an X, which is the Roman numeral for 10, but this one's actually just an X. It was a whole thing about rebranding for the Super Nintendo, and then actual Mega Man 7 came out a couple years later on the Super Nintendo anyway, cause... Money! And this is really only the seventh title if you don't count the DOS remake of 3, the Game Boy remake of 2, also there was this other one called Dr. Wily's Revenge, which really isn't a mainline game, but still very much Mega Man, plus many more, and needless to say, we've had a few Mega Men since then too. So yeah. We've been dealing with this crap forever. Basically since Money! I'll touch more on this later because not all sequels are inherently bad. And actually, Mega Man X is a pretty good game. It just so happens good games tend to regurgitate the most sequels. Some of them decent, most shitty, and or soulless. And much like the also common trend of played out TV shows that should have ended countless seasons earlier, milking an IP is a great way to kill it. Okay, so not new, but why does this matter? Well, thank you so much for asking. Because perception matters. Not new, different. With advances in technology and changes in the gaming industry, something along the way started to shift. I tend to consider myself a live service game enjoyer, but it's hard to argue that the evolution of expansions to DLCs to weekly patches to hell will support this shit forever until you stop giving us money for it hasn't caused some unintended consequences. See, if a Super Nintendo or a PlayStation 2 game was bad, well, it was bad. That was it. Flops of the past suffered a quick death followed by a steep descent into oblivion where they would exist for eternity. Or become a collector's item worth a small fortune. But that just ain't how it works anymore. Now you can slap an early access on that bad boy and call it a day. What's up guys? I wanted to make this video because in today's stream I had an interesting moment that showcases the invisibility bug that's been in this wipe since the very beginning and still isn't fixed. This bug makes it so that other players in your raid cannot see or hear you at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, you said what? Other players in your raid cannot see or hear you at all. Nah, brah, nah, it's a beta. We don't worry about that shit, they testing. Six year, $140 beta. Get fucked. And if you're a PC gamer, oh boy, have I got something special for you because early access is basically just the first three to six months of any major AAA game's full release. I'm just waiting for the day they start throwing a DLC pay to win spin on that too. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to play this in 1080p? That's going to cost you 60 frames per second. How about 15 bucks a month? Sucker. But despite the fact that gaming continues to trend towards undercooked releases, predatory monetization, and a huge lack of creativity in the AAA space, people keep buying them anyway. So I guess that's just the way it is. 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 Nah, fuck that shit. I want my cake and my Bloodborne too. So I'm gonna do what any other classy internet degenerate would and yell about it a bunch and pretend like it made a difference. You wanna know what I wanna know? I wanna know how we've gotten so far down this rabbit hole that now we have to choose between these shitty ultimatums when purchasing a product that was promised to us as a complete product. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, which route developer release the game too soon and get shit on or delay a game and still get shit on? That's Always delay. By the way, this is not a decision. Always delay. Every single time. Never don't delay. And you know what? He's right.
Faced with the alternative of another bug-laden performance shitstorm, I would much rather have a game pushed back. But why are we having this conversation in the first place? What happened to planning? Long before the need to either postpone or release another bona fide turd, can't we just, I don't know, rationally assess the length of time necessary to bring the product to fruition? And I get it, developing a game is a complex task, far more complex than I would ever claim to understand. I've heard that studios will go hype mode early to draw the interest of investors so they have the funds to make the game, and then once those investors get involved, they have an expectation of timelines and yada yada. I don't care. It is not my job as the consumer to figure all this crap out. I'm paying you to make a good game. Or I mean, come on, at least a functional one. I'm not even asking the world anymore. And it is utterly clear, given the amount of incredible games from the past and coming out of smaller indie studios right now, that this cannot be the only path to getting a game to market. I mean, how does anything get made? How are rockets made? They don't bug out and implode most the time. They have a lot better track record than game releases this year, all right? And when games release to poor reception due to performance and bugs and bad optimization, I think it is an absolute tragedy. You know how depressing it must be for these developers to witness the public's first impression with their product they've worked so hard on being game-breaking bugs and 10-hour queues? These could otherwise be masterpieces, exceptional pieces of art with fantastic gameplay, a beautiful soundtrack, and artistic vision, but nope. It's fucking sad. And as much as the greedy part of the industry would like to make this a standard practice, I think it goes without saying that particularly bad releases can and do inflict irreparable harm and tarnish not only that title, but by association the studio that made it. Despite it being one of the most brilliant redemption arcs in recent memory, there are still people out there that are never going to revisit No Man's Sky. And I was almost one of them. It was a few years and a couple friends begging me to try it out later that I finally decided to relent. That mixed with the fact that, well, I probably play games a bit too much. It's not a problem or anything. Then I almost certainly never would have fired the game up again after release day. And others like me are out there. They were enchanted with the concept, hyped about the release, and that bitter taste of disappointment has replaced any imagined experience in its infinite universe. Which brings me to... Marketing nowadays has become a diarrhea blast of anomalous terms and bullet point words. Immersive. Customizable. Deep. Marketing experts for games have realized if you use a bunch of fancy descriptors but don't actually say shit, then people will just make up the rest in their head to fill in the blanks. And am I crazy, or is this not basically a principle of running an actual scam? Even if it is a good game, or in the very least, as advertised. I'd still argue these vague, evocative marketing techniques are at minimum shallow and probably just plain disingenuous. Clearly, the aim is to play on people's imaginations rather than offer anything tangible. And it works both ways. Then expectations are all blown out of proportion, so the game bombs in review after release, and then CEOs come on stage and go, oh, we're sorry, and yeah, you have to change the music. This rant just got serious. This same sneaky use of colorful language to create hype is a contributing factor to the disappointment felt when the individual or audiences personal bar isn't met. Why wouldn't somebody go back to No Man's Sky? The game's good now. What's your deal? The deal is the fantasy is broken. The expectations miss the mark by a solar system. They aim for the stars and hit the fucking pavement. And now that image, that experience is what that person is going to remember. In the same way all these vivid terms and loose promises create a positive image, now the reality of the experience creates a much more concrete and negative one. And the same goes for all the rest of these redeemed games, by the way. Final Fantasy XIV, Cyberpunk 2077, Elder Scrolls Online, is there any doubt these would have been much better received and oh by the way, likely made more money had they just had enough time to cook in the first place? Oh, What's going on Starfield? Oh, Are you ready? Oh, please buy You've already been delayed three times, that's not a great sign. Are you sure you're ready? Money. Do you want to end up like Overwatch 2? Oh, this is how you end up like Overwatch 2. Game Pass. And I know I'm going to hear it. Well, No Man's Sky and Final Fantasy XIV were years ago. They're good now. Why bring them up? Because they set a bad precedent. It takes so much in a market as huge as gaming has become to make any meaningful consumer-friendly progress, to cut through just a little red tape and so so little to damage it. We've seen this happen in real time for years now. The second it's proven that you can get away with selling less for more, 
it spreads like a plague. One set of horse armor, they're off to the races. Okay, it's probably not that simple, but eh, close enough. And to be clear, I'm not blaming the individual developers here. The mass majority of what I've read suggests that most of these development teams, even at larger studios like EA and Blizzard, they hate this shit as much as we do. Given the choice of owning up or abandoning the project, the teams that put in work to resurrect these games deserve admiration. I'm glad they're success stories, but they should also be cautionary tales. Internet Historian did an amazing video on what happened with No Man's Sky. I highly recommend it. The folks at Hello Games aren't scammers or wallet ninja. Ninjas, they had a grand idea for a game, and I suspect many of these games that came around likely had passionate teams behind them. The issue is the industry at large learned nothing. If anything, it seems like it just doubled down. This is a prime example of the developers themselves not being the villains, but the circumstances surrounding these too big to fail titles creating a bad environment for everyone involved. From the game devs to the players. Pure, unadulterated hype cramming every single bullet point mechanic we can possibly squeeze in there. Zero expectations in reality. And then the inevitable backlash of not being able to reach this lofty, if not impossible goal. And these marketing teams know exactly what to say to farm the reactions they want. It's brilliant. Shitty, but brilliant. Everything's the destiny killer. The wow killer. The fallout killer. Well, I guess that one worked out. I can't recall a time in recent memory when marketing hype, specifically this flavor of it, has done anything positive for the perception of a game or its studio. The majority of studios actually beloved by their audience tend to be the ones that sit down, shut up, and make games. That's also exactly what Hello did to fix theirs. It's become a cycle of overpromise and underperform release after release, despite the fact that in the indie space, we got bangers like this pulling down overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam with 20 year old graphics and four buttons to press. Why? Because it's a good game. It's fun. It's different. It's also a little $3 Neopets Flash minigame that went on to spawn dozens of clones and sell thousands of copies. You don't need to reinvent the wheel to make a good game. Stop trying to sell us the next Minecraft, the next World of Warcraft, the next whatever craft, and just make us something fun and functional. And consider not stuffing your mitts in the marketing cookie jar before you have any idea if your shit's even gonna run. If these studios spent a tenth as much time, money, and resources actually playing and testing their own games with their own QA as they did gassing their shit up, not only would we get better games, but they'd sell more of them too. And no, this is not every studio. We got plenty of major league players out here doing God's work, but it's scary that putting out a polished product is becoming the exception and not the rule. Here's to another year of the P word. Potential. What'd you think I meant? Hey everybody, if you're watching the video and you made it this far, Thanks. This is my first video for the channel. I had a blast making it. This started out as like just kind of an experiment and kind of turned into a passion project. So I definitely intend to do more. I'm sorry about the quality of the video. If I do this for any length of time, I'll upgrade so you don't have to look at this grainy bullshit. And yes, this is a sock on my microphone doing the best with what I got. But I had a ton of fun making the video and in the future I'll probably do something a little bit less ranty, more lighthearted too. This is something I was pretty passionate about. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And this is where I'll play the outro if I figured out how to make one. Okay, this is literally my first video. I got nothing to put here. Here, have a banana. Go check out this guy's videos. He's awesome. Big, big inspiration for the channel. Go check him out. All right.